Have you guys got any questions at the moment from what I'm doing? Or is it any self-explanatory? <laughs> if we have any in the studio audience, go ahead. Choice of color black uh, backgrounds. Um, the reason I've gone to the blue is because the fabric I've got is bandanas is blue also. You know me, I like to use color on color, same thing. So it's just keeping, keeping a nice um, color tone within the image. Yeah. Just to follow up on that, people are asking again, I think you said earlier that you're using cotton fabric. Yeah. Is there anything you wouldn't use? Um, I don't use high, yeah, I don't use really shiny fabrics because unless I'm after that um, specific effect to show in if, I, if I'm using like a, um, a wrinkled fabric effect or something, the shine can actually be really good for capturing a natural light. But I do try and stay away from um, really shiny things because it can reflect light too much. Yeah. <gasps> Great. So see, we've got some cute little blue bandanas. Hi, you've got a question too? Yeah, I'm, I'm noticing you're using a 50. Are you a prime lens lady? I am. You, you are? Yeah, I so. just quite, quite like it. Um, like on the Canon, I would possibly either use the 50 mil or the 85. But um, I like to work closely with my animals. I don't like to be too far away. Um, I like to have interaction with them. So, um, yeah, so I tend to use a standard lens to just keep it, there's no distortion like what you would possibly get with a, a wide angle lens or something. Um, and I don't need to be that close. <laughs> yeah, but the, um, yeah, so that would be the reasoning behind my choice in that, in that regards. Just really being close and working in prox close proximity. Cute. Don't you look gorgeous? It's beautiful colorings. This, the, pa the, um, the pale blonde with the, Right, okay, I'll do, Danny, if you watch this puppy so that we don't jump off the table or anything. I'm just going to pop this one on the opposite side so that we've got... Seems so quiet, it was manic with the kittens and now it's so calm and beautiful. It's like, yay, you guys are perfect. The other side. Um, yep, so I'm going to pop this little puppy on the other side. So I've got bandanas around their necks. Um, and this is just the same thing. I just bought a little piece of fabric from um, a store, just cut it into some little squares to make bandanas. It's just a great way to keep control of your own colours within the images and that sort of thing. Oh, and the tail starts going when this little buddy comes in. Very cute. So what I'm going to do, you guys, I'm going to probably need one of you on either side, but we're going to have to make sure we don't block the natural... Because I'm shooting a natural light, you've got to be careful we don't block the light. So if you guys can kneel down, would be really good. And just hold them in position and then I'm going to make my noises. Now, see this little puppy here has got his tail between the legs. What I always, it's just a, it's just the way it sat down. It's a bit, but what I try and do, oh no, they're going to start playing. Here we go. It's a kitten scenario again. Um, if they sit on their tail, what I try to do is bring, pull the tail out and bring it around, bes um, around beside them. It's never a good look when a dog's got a tail between his legs, even though it, may, it might have just sat that way, but it just looks like the dog's unhappy. So we try to keep the tails from being, just watch we don't pull the fabric too much. I don't, I would try and keep it. <laughs> okay, this little one might be a bit too active. So what we might do is swap him out. I'll just take the, just watch, I've got the camera on the ground behind you. So just, um, we're gonna swap out with a slightly less. Excitable. Sorry, <laughs> ruining your fun. <laughs> okay, look at you. I might just get a single shot while we get another one. Okay. It's too good an opportunity, because you are too cute. Okay. What I might do with this one, bring in a little visual. My not so little visual, my big pig. <laughs> I know it's such a funny noise as well. What's this? What's this? So what I'm doing now, because I've already focused previously, it should still be on the same focus, so I'm just moving my camera in and out to get the right focus for hopefully that. No. <laughs> Did we get? 
cool. We did actually get some eye line with that, I think. Yeah. And we have got some, um, oh, another thing, which because these guys have got quite um, hairy little faces, when working in natural light, it's really important to still try and keep the light so that um, you get highlights in the eyes. The last thing you want to have is what's called dead eye, where you've got absolutely no highlights in the eye. It just, it's not, it's, it doesn't look nice in humans or in, um, in animals. Alrighty, let's put this on. So you're on the side. Yes. Come here, buddy. You can probably... Um, Sit so, him down. Yeah, sit him down and then I'll pop it on. Girl boy. It's a girl. A boyfriend. I, it's a, just a girl and this is a boy? Yeah. yeah. Pink boy, a pink girl, red boy. <laughs> God. Who ever thought that someone would have so many problems with girls and boys? <laughs> right, so we have, let me straighten that up a little bit. So what we're going to do is just tuck them under again. Let's flatten that back standing out. Great. Oh, you're quite a, you're going to be a big boy. You're a bit more hefty than the others. Right, so, what we need, if, if you just keep, girl, if you just put him back into position, I'll get myself ready. Let's see if my noises can do the magic. I'll just get... <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Alrighty, so, so what we have, the problem we're having here, what I would probably do in this situation, I would probably get gaffer tape and tape the edges of the background so we don't have this problem so much. But, um, you try treats or is that a um, bad idea too? Uh, I'm not sure with these guys where the treats will be any. I think because they've, they've had their sleep now, they're just waking up, so they probably want to just run around. But that's all right. I'm, my magic noises are not working. So we'll, I'll see this one's up. So cute. But we need, well, at the moment, we need to get them back into the same, so they're in the same focal plane. So um, if one's further forward than the other, because I'm working on such a shallow depth of field, we're going to get one in focus and one out. If that happens and I get the perfect shot, what I try and do is shoot two shots simultaneously really quickly, where I've got the focus on one and the focus on the other, and then in post-production, I'll swap ahead in. It's cheating, yeah, but it works. <laughs> so we do have, that's cool, to see if you can get them to watch that. going to move this way a little bit. This little one on the right seems good. Do you want to, um, Amelia, if you go on that side and keep an eye on this one, and Danielle, if you work with them with the feather, that would be great. Perfect. Actually, hang on. we just just bring that back. To, bring it back to me here. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> he does not. I know. <laughs> hang on. Yeah, no, it's hard. <coughs> Doing good though. I know it's hard to, it's, the table's quite slippery, so we're getting a lot of, hang on. Just get the, yeah, and we'll try once more. Tuck the bum underneath, like I said before, if you can. Pop, pop, pop. I think he's, you're gonna be distracting the other one now, aren't you? Woo, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Amelia's getting a bath. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Cool. Alrighty. Okay. What I'm going to do, I'll. This is also what I loved about the 4x5 camera. I was always on a tripod, and so I could just easily go and move the cat, but I'm going to make, make sure that I don't knock the tether off those. Alrighty. How are you guys doing? Are you guys going to sit still or not? Are we better off going with something which is a little bit more. Let's, actually, there's a few sleeping. Let's just pick up the two, this real blondie and the one at the back and the green collar. And we might try those. Bringing them in from a sleep might work a little bit um, better. And you've got a question while we're... Quick question while you're getting set up. Uh, on lighting, do you, I, I understand we're probably not using a reflector. Would you normally sometimes use a reflector yeah, on the other I side would. to fill in? Yeah, I, would probably, I, just, I don't want to block your vision at the moment, so I normally would right. probably see how we've got a little bit of, yes. but that's okay. I can lighten that in post-production to right. be the perfect shot, but um, I normally would have a reflector in on this side just to um, 
to keep it a little bit. It's, it's not terrible. No. But we are potentially getting a little bit of a dead eye on the right. Um, Would you ever add uh, a little bit of uh, a light in a, a semi, yes. somewhat dead yep. eye? Sometimes, like, see in how post. in this image here, you've got a good highlight reflection in the left eye, but possibly not in the right. So therefore, what I might do is actually take that the internal eye from that shot, flip it, mm -hmm. and put it into the other eye, mm -hmm. um, and then work with it that way. And then maybe um, you might have to put, reposition the highlight within the eye, but it's still it's the natural colour of the dog's eye and the same um, actual highlight reflection which is going in there. Yeah. But yeah, there's little things like that I do in post-production, which, as I say, is cheating, but if it gives you the perfect um, option. Can I have a tiny bit of gaffer tape here? What have we got? I'm just going to take that edge. Sorry. Cool. Oop. <laughs> oh, that woke you guys up. <laughs> cool. I'm just going to bring that. Didn't want to do it before when they were all sleeping. It is a bit of a noisy thing, gaffer tape. But but that should hopefully stop them from... Right, so we're going to bring, put on the bandanas and see if we can get this magic two-shot. Can I ask a quick question about the backdrop, Rachel? Yep. Um, so Lori Lori had said, are you ever concerned about the wrinkles in the backdrop, or is that something you Photoshop out, or do you yeah, try to get um, them out before normally, you shoot? Yeah, normally I would try probably and stretch it out around the poles and things. Um, but this is actually this one's not as stretchy a fabric, so if it's not perfectly smooth, then you're in post production. But with my shallow depth of field, often it drops out anyway. The only thing which is going to show up is if there's an actual um, highlight from the, the shadow of the natural light. So like here, we've got a little bit of undulating through the background, which means that that might show up with the natural light. But I'll just retouch it in, um, in post whatever shows, and which is a distraction from the image. Yeah. Alrighty. I have a question. Uh, when you're balancing your light here, do you think the dog images look better with balanced light, or do you mind that two to one or three to one ratio? Um, I don't mind. It all sort of like I do try and keep it as even as possible, just to keep it that soft tones all the way through. But if I'm thinking it's a little bit too contrasty, then I will just adjust it slightly in post production, which I'll show you um, when we do the post production section. Yeah, yeah. But it's. It'll, like I might actually sometimes shoot specifically for really, really um, hard, much more contrasty. If I'm shooting from um, a really directional natural light, it might completely blacken off in one area, and then you've just got um, a dog's profile looking up into beautiful natural light coming in. So it all depends on the setup and things. So, but in a situation like this, I would prefer to have it more even. So I would bring in a reflector quite close in on the side. But as I say, I don't want to block your vision. So we're yeah. look at you, beautiful. Right. We might need to swap your bandana around to that side. <laughs> okay, so let's bring you in. I'll just take you. Okay, no playing, you guys. Uh-oh, uh-oh. This is the trouble with bringing two of them together. They think, oh, it's playtime. Oh. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> oh. Alrighty, we're going to have the same scenario as we did with the kittens. Is that good? Puppy massage. Yeah. Whoop. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> no, sit down. Isn't it funny? You bring one puppy in and instantly it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay, we'll just see if I can mesmerize these guys with a bit of noise. Do what you can, Danielle. <laughs> oh, look at the little face. It's like, let me at you, let me at you. <laughs> Ooh, ooh. What I might do, where is I have got here, I've got a tiger. <laughs> we'll just see if this. <gasps> oh, you're a little bit nervous of that, sweetie. See if you're just. I don't think she likes that. No, she doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bit too full on. That's why I do find that natural noises are better because sometimes something like that is a little bit too harsh. This one loves it, but this one doesn't. So we'll just have to... <laughs> oh, bless. I love it. <laughs> but, yeah, not sure if you guys are going to do this. 
<laughs> they need they actually they need to run around more yeah to get into we had the perfect opportunity before when they were all had had their sleep and we got some shots and we brought them in and it was absolutely perfect but now in a um, ideal situation we would probably let them run around a bit more get back into when they're about to either Fall to sleep again is a great time to work with them because they're really dopey and just not really have that much energy. Or, or then, um, <laughs> so cute. Or then wait until while they are asleep and then you can maybe do some sleeping shots and things. But um, are they, um, Shari, are they okay to have a little treat? I have hers. Yeah, yeah. oh, you've got hers. Oh, great. Oh, sorry, I didn't realise you had, yeah. That's cool. <clears throat> we'll, just, we'll just keep, we'll keep trying and see. But have you guys got any more questions while we see if we can get the... Do you yes. ever use... Oh, oh. After you, Kenna. Do you ever use um, containment? Like you talked about for the kitties using vases. Do you ever use that with puppies? I do. Something. I do. I love... Um, I actually love going to antique stores and stuff and getting really gorgeous little old antique um, barrels and things. I did a shoot with... I had to photograph 11 Great Dane puppies once. And... Um, it was what I got, I got to do it, I did a, a montage of images where I photographed them all individually except for two of, the, yeah, there was 11 puppies and I had nine shots in the final gorgeous big display print for the, bre um, for the breeder. So I had, um, and I had this gorgeous antique little barrel which was the perfect size for them to sit in. So each puppy got to sit in them and they did something different. One sat leaning against it with its arm out or one sat with its leg over or one just sat there, sat there really straight up and down and things. So you I got like, and they're quite, they're different looking puppies anyway. So we got, but all the same colour. So it looked amazing. So you had nine images and in two of the barrels there was two puppies. So that's how you got the 11. So it worked beautifully. And that was just finding a gorgeous little um, antique barrel, which was probably about the size of a normal bucket from, um, <clears throat> from an antique store. So it was just a really good, good prop. So yes, I do put puppies in things. Yep. And, and that question well, came from both Valerie and Divatography. So shout out. <laughs> Alrighty. Are they into food or are they too much? Yeah. Yeah, too much. Oh, that's so I'll take your finger with it. Yeah, oh, really? Oh, okay. <laughs> Give me pop pops. Hey. Just bring them standing to the edge of the um, background, actually, and we'll see if we can get them standing. Just show. So I'm just, what I need to do now is to see if we can get something. If we can get them. Right, and oh, next. Sad. I know he sat down, it's so cute. Yeah, I don't know if they like that. I might just I get the. Yeah. yeah. So if you try this again, see if they'll watch the, watch the feathers. Oh, that puppy sit. I love those puppy sits. Really cute. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just wave it around a little bit so they watch it and just see what. Uh oh, you've uh -oh. taken your bandana off. <laughs> Are you right with getting it on? Yeah. yeah. So just tie it tight enough so it hides the collar. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so what we need to do at the moment, the, this little puppy on the left is too far forward. So what we need to do is bring them so they're at the same, preferably at the same focal plane. <laughs> oh. And we'll just, oh. And just bring the feathers, wave it around a little bit so that they watch it and they're quite interested. So we'll, <laughs> so probably, interested. Amelia, I know, probably you wrangling the puppies. Come on girl, you can do it. <laughs> Oh, so I tried to stand on it. Yeah, it's cute. Alrighty. So if we can just maybe just try and push the puppies in a little bit closer together. Okay. <laughs> Not quite the same as kittens when it comes to watching. We'll see if we can. Do you need? You want? Probably want someone else to help you on. Because we're working natural light, we've got to watch that we don't actually block <coughs> any light though as well. Just, um, oh. let's, can you just hold this one at the moment, Amelia? Yeah, we're just going to work with this one. Just bring him further forward and see if we can get him. Oh. <laughs> hey, pop, pop. Oh, it's so cute. Want a little further forward, Yeah, pre preferably. Just pick him up, um, her up, sorry, and bring her forward. <laughs> Good girl. And we'll just get the feathers again. She quite like the... Quite likes watching the little feathers. What's this? Oh, good girl. Oops, sorry. That's right. 
Oh, that's quite cute, actually. Leave her, leave her. Okay. Yep. Just see if you can get her attention to... She says, nope. I <laughs> know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's fine. If she's sitting like that, it's really cute. It's really cute. Just watch. She doesn't. Come on. <laughs> oh. oh. I know. Oh, bless you. We'll just bring you forward a bit. Come on, sweetie. Come on. Just bring yourself forward. Come on. Oh. It's all right. Good girl. Just give her a list. Just... She's a little she's a little bit more timid this one. Mm -hmm. So we just need to just give her a little pat and just make sure she feels it all. Oh those expressions. Mm -hmm. Magic. Cute. Yes. Alrighty. I'll just if you just keep tickling her there and I'll. Just bring the feathers up to the camera if you can. Very cute. We'll just, I've got another one, brilliant. We'll just bring this one in and just see if they'll <coughs> sit together. Oh, he blinked. You do get that, animals blink as well. <laughs> oh, look at you, this is beautiful. Really, real golden color. Is this ginger again? Yep. <laughs> Hi, ginger. Just actually, I'm going to try something. Let's bring them in close together. And both of you okay. hold them at the bottom. And I'm going to crop in from their chests up. Sorry, oh, so if you okay. can, your hands are okay. Hand yep. If you, um, but what, I need you to bend down as much as possible okay. so, <laughs> so that we don't block the natural light. Yep. So just what I need you to do is to squeeze them together so that they're... Oh, I'm going to try and work this as well. Actually, can I get someone else just to come in and just help me with the working this to camera? <coughs> She'll never look up if I've got a treat. Oh, no, no, she won't. Cool, so just push the bum, push your bum in on that side. That's cool. Just keep your hands at the front down as low as you can. And I'm just going to see. <laughs> hey. Just see if we can. Um, hang on, I think I need to. They're probably a tiny bit dark, but we can put, change that in post production. Hang on. Alrighty, I'm just going to do another one. Yeah, just bring it up high. Cool, perfect. Oh, that's cute. That's cute. And now, if you'll see in the image, I've got some hands in the background when it comes in. Hang on. Voila. See, but I can, I can remove those hands in post-production. So that's, um, but that's really gorgeous how you've got um, two little puppies leaning into each other. It's very, very cute. And I can tidy up the bandanas a little bit. The fabric's a little bit messy and things, but that's easily tidied up. So I reckon we've done really, really well with those puppies. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> oh, did you wake up all the puppies? Oh, never mind. Well, let's do some, let's, let's do, some take, do some questions. So yep. if you guys have any in the studio, grab a mic, but we've got some uh, in the chat rooms. Do you have any specific advice for other species 
So, if, because you've worked with all kinds of animals. Do yeah, you, I'm like, going to... Um, oh, another... Uh, yeah, I have got another yeah. segment which I'm going to be focusing in on working with more... Um, well, with more challenging and less responsive animals. Um, that's when tomorrow we'll be photographing George Bailey, who's a rabbit. And also um, I'll be go going into working with more exotic animals, lions, tigers, um, goldfish, all frogs I've worked with, every, all those. So we will be touching base on all of those so we can answer plenty of questions when we get into that section. Yeah. I am so distracted. <laughs> I'm just like, the puppies, the puppies. <laughs> focus, you are, focus. You, I know, focus, focus. You're incredible, so incredible to watch. Um, Atelier Witt, who is joining us from Denmark, would like to know, when you're working with puppies, do you have a specific age range that you prefer? Like, what is the best age for a puppy, or does it not matter? Um, definitely the easiest age is this sort of age, about eight weeks. Well, six to eight weeks is brilliant. Um, when they get beyond eight weeks, they start being more active. Um, but then I suppose, and then, so you've got a period probably from say about 10 weeks to about sort of six months maybe, where they can be a little bit mad. <laughs> and, but, but you can still get shots. You've just got to be a lot more patient and work with them, choose the right times to work with them uh, and that sort of thing. But may, most of the time, you can work it with any age, but you know, definitely, six to eight weeks is the easiest, yeah. I have worked with five week old puppies before, which is okay, but they're just probably not quite as responsive. Um, and so you'll probably find you're gonna get more out of the age group from six to eight, eight weeks, yeah. It's so fascinating, the um, things that are so similar between photographing babies and mm. photographing puppies and yep. having the right age, the right... Um, the, the next question that we have is from Atani Lai, which says, is there a better period of day to have a photo shoot for puppies? Are they more calm in the morning or vice versa? Again, yeah, same with babies. It's the same, same with out. babies. Like, that's what I've trans um, transferred into working with babies so easily because of my experience with, with animals, because it is so different. It's so similar, I should say, not so different. Um, but working with um, time rise with the animals doesn't really matter the time of the day. Um, just as long as, like, if you're working with adult dogs and things, you've got to make sure they've had, had a walk, gone to the toilet, done all those sort of things. So definitely, um, like, a good time is always after their morning walk and that sort of thing, bring them in in the mornings or something like that. But it really just it really depends on the routine of the dog as well. Some dogs might be better in the evenings, that sort of thing. So it, just re it really just de depends on each individual. Yeah. And speaking of that, uh, Rick Kimmick had asked or says, obviously a pair of lively kittens, that was a great challenge, and maybe sleepy puppies are less of a challenge. But what is the most challenging breed you've worked with, and are you, do you think about the breed when you're going in to take photos of things, or, or are you like, I, I will just handle this the way that I handle every shoot? Or are you like, oh no, not this. <laughs> or, oh yes, I love this breed. Yeah, um, every breed is different. So if I've come up with a specific idea which I'm wanting to create for my licensing range, then of course I would probably choose the correct breed to work for that idea. Um, but if I've got a, a private portrait commission client or something, then you deal with whatever is put in front of you. So you have to, you've got one dog which is gonna come in, but as I say, meet the owner first, find out what they're wanting, um, find out what breed of dog it is, find out what their character, personality is, um, the things they like to do, um, talk to them whether they want, do they want um, simple studio portraits or do they wanna go on location and do a shoot? Um, we're going to be covering more on location shooting um, on day day three of the of the workshop. But seriously, it, it's you just have to just do your research, find out about the breed of dog and what's going to work best with those sort of things. But if you actually come up with an idea, which is a concept you're creating creating for yourself, then you have more flexibility as to which type of breed um, of cat or dog or animal you might choose to find an elephant to work with something for things. So it all depends on what you're wanting and, and the situation with what you're actually working, working within. So like I said before, when I said your animal noises were ridiculous, I meant that in the best possible way because I was almost enjoying them more than watching the puppies themselves. <laughs> you're so good. Your puppy bark sounds so realistic. This dog over here was having a little bit of Oh, really? a little bit excited. But has it taken you 20 years to learn all those noises? And 
I see that you threw cows in. There yeah, was some it's so gorillas, yeah, birds, birds. It was birds. Well, yeah, a monkey. My monkey noise. Your monkey, I, I your monkey it, was yeah. great. I did was I just sort of um, work with like I, I didn't do the sheep. Like I, I meh, bow like a sheep. I can do horses. I can do whatever. It has. It's just years of practice. But can you I teach see. that to someone? Can we get um, Brit up and you teach Brit how to make an animal noise? Is that a it. possibility? Let's do it. Come on, Brit. Come on, Brit. Because he's the man in the yeah. audience, I think we should put it on Brit, don't you, to make a baby, a little baby puppy squeak? <laughs> what do you think, Brit? We're I serious. Know, yeah. We're not. We're, we're not, not joking. joking. <laughs> I must say, I, my husband is brilliant at doing a really deep, quite ferocious dog noise which is actually sometimes on location works brilliantly to get, especially when I was doing the New York dog, there was so much distraction on the streets. It was re I found it really, really challenging as opposed to where I've normally worked with animals. Working in New York was really difficult because it was just so busy and so much happening. And the dogs were actually so used to noise that it was, that they didn't pay any attention to the noises and my noises weren't working. I was thinking, what's gone wrong with me? I've lost my neck. But, um, but, but my husband's noise, because he's got a deeper voice, and he made this really much deeper, and it overpowered anything else, and it was something they're like, oh my God, what was that? So it did get their attention. So it depends, as, as I was saying before, you just gotta choose the tone and what you wanna do. Um, but sometimes my lower, high-pitched little work just, didn't, just got drowned out in street noise and things like that, so you need a much deeper, more ferocious sort of noise to come in to yeah, so you'd be good at that one. You know, I actually, I actually noticed that because when they were up there and they would do something funny, I would laugh and they instantly were looking at me. Yeah, yeah. they're like, ooh, they hear that deeper a, a deeper noise, yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah, they do respond differently to different tones and that sort of thing.